So this sucks. Lauren is dead because I didn't know which prompt was the prompt to save her and which one was to exit the car. I was trying to... You actually saw me try to have Scott not exit the car once, and I succeeded. And then I started saving her, but then I accidentally did the wrong thing because the orchestra was intimidating me. So, whoopsie do. All the innocent are dead and all the guilty are living. Let's see how many more innocent people Scott Shelby is going to mow down before turning himself into the police. It's one dead. I'm going to try to succeed at this, I might as well. Two dead. Three dead. Four dead. Five. Six. Are you out of ammo yet, Scott? You better reload. I think that's ten, but I lost count exactly. Screw reloading. The laws of reality don't seem to apply to us shootout scenes. I think he took a bullet to the ear because I missed the counts. This sucks. He's still like killing people even though like I'm failing on the counts. He's taking a lot of hits. <laughs> he's running for his life. I missed a couple prompts and he's taking a lot of hits and running for his life. So he cannot die there, he has to survive that scene. I was actually trying to shoot the guys because, um, even though I don't have a very high opinion of Scott at the moment, uh, I just kind of wanted to see how much carnage could uh, ensue, but I guess I failed that section. Now Madison thinks that uh, Ethan got arrested because she wasn't able to warn him. Unless she saw him run away. Maybe she saw him run away, but she wasn't involved in the chase scene. And she's going to investigate something because she said she had an idea of uh, how to prove that he wasn't the origami killer. John Shepard died 30 years ago. Hope his mother has all the answers to this puzzle. Oh, she's going to see uh, John Shepard's mother in the nursing home. Hello, I'm looking for Anne Shepard's room. Please sign the visitor's book. Are you a member of the family? Yeah, you could say that. Oh, she'll be pleased to have a visitor. No one ever comes to see her. With the Alzheimer's, she has trouble remembering things, but it'll still please her, you know. It's room 19 at the end of the corridor. Thank you. I know this sounds sad, but, um, this is what happens to you in your old age if you choose the wrong man to have children with. If you choose someone to have children with ladies who's going to be an abusive father or a neglectful father, then your children are going to grow up hating you and never visit you in the nursing home. And one of your children may become a serial killer after the other one dies in a horrible accident. I know I've been snarky for most of this game, but like really, that's what happens. You cannot be a bad parent and just expect to get away scot-free. There are repercussions to your choices in life, as in this game. I don't mean to, like, stand up on a soapbox too much, but, um... There are just so many bad parents in this time and age, and I kind of consider it the number one problem that, uh, this world is facing. After cultural Marxism, maybe. But the two are kind of related in a way. Hello, Mrs. Shepherd. Is it time for my pills already? 
No, Mrs. Shepherd, I am never on time with my pills. I don't know what they do here. In the other hospital, they were always on time. But here... My name is Madison Page. I'm a journalist. Madison really like isn't much of one for aliases. I don't like this hospital. The food isn't very good, you know. She just gives up when she runs into her real name. She drives down the street on her motorcycle with a bullhorn shouting her real name to the crowd. It like you parades and... Son John, and John had a twin brother. Do you have my pills? It's time for my pills. I know what happened at Carnaby Square. Do you remember? Carnaby Square. I think I used to live there a long time ago. She has Alzheimer's? We didn't have much money at the time, you know. We had to make do with very little. Do you remember John? My Johnny. He is a good little boy, you know. She thinks her son John is still alive. I think your son is in trouble, Mrs. Shepherd. He's done some terrible things. I need to find him. Do you understand? Terrible things you're telling me. He never came to see them, <laughs> did he? In ten years, never. No one forgets their mother, do they? That's true, for better or worse. No one forgets their mother, even if they decide never to come and see their mother. Mrs. Shepherd, your son may be linked to a series of murders. Perhaps you have some information that could help the investigation. Are you the new nurse? Where are my pills? Your other son, Mrs. Shepherd, John's twin brother. What was his name? What other son? I have no other son. I never had any children. <laughs> She went from having one child to zero children. Try to remember, Mrs. Shepherd. John's twin brother was placed with a foster family after that. Yeah, the, the Shelbys. You remember the Shelbys? What was the name of the foster family? That nice I man, asked Richard them Shelby. For television, you know? Who owned an antique they store? Didn't have enough money. So was best friends with a guy named Manfred. The hummingbird. The dog. I have to make an origami dog to show to Mrs. Shepherd because uh, that has some significance symbolically in the family and she's going to remember something when I make it. She's remembering that she All has dogs children have the again. Same name. I was wasting my time telling him they couldn't all have the same name. But he always wanted his paper dogs Max. It's funny, isn't it? All right, thank Madison. All right, no point in wasting my time. No point in wasting my time. More by staying here. She's ready to go already. This is a cool camera angle. It take days, if not longer, to find the name of the family that adopted her son. Sean Mars would be dead by then. 
Or you could just play this video game and look at the story from all the other characters' points of view. Then you'd know. It seems to be working. She's remembering stuff. Gotta find something else to show her. Show her the orchids. Are there orchids anywhere? Maybe someone else brought flowers for their mother so they, the flowers are still outside of the room or inside the other person's room and I can just steal them and give them to Mrs. Shepherd. Yeah, there's flowers right there. Bingo. This woman might be the origami killer's mother. Gee, do you think? Must be some way to get her to remember. All right, here's the flowers. Lovely orchid. My sons loved orchids. We used to grow them in the back. When John died, I laid orchids on his grave. When John died, I laid orchids on his grave. So can I ask you about John now? I'll sit down on the bed. Remember, he's coming back. Don't stop now. Just, just remember. All right, no point in wasting your time. <laughs> I won't learn anything more by staying here. She has very contradictory thoughts. I don't see any dialogue options here. Maybe I just need to look at her for a moment. Give her a little eye contact. A little human touch. Come on, girl to girl, you can tell me. This is a photograph of her two sons. Are these your children, Mrs. Shepherd? John and his brother? Is that them? They're good little boys. Their father never looked after them. Always drinking. They didn't have an easy life, you know. Yeah, I'm sure you were a wonderful mother. I'm sure you were totally a victim. Well, like, uh, like social services took away uh, their child because their father was such a lousy drunk and she was, uh, she had a victim complex or something. In the beginning, I used to go and see my little boy. And then I got sick and I couldn't go any longer. She probably also has, like, Munchausen's or some other hypochondriac disorder. I thought I didn't love him anymore. You didn't, don't lie. His name, Mrs. Shepherd. What was his name? But I loved him. If you only knew how much I missed him. Please, Anne. His name. What was his name? Everyone always wants to pretend they treated their family super well when they have one foot in the grave. Come closer. They just want someone to believe their lies that they're desperately trying to tell themselves. This game is very realistic with the way that it portrays um, the characters. There was actually no sound. I was talking over that, but there was no sound to that scene because the game wants you to uh, not be able to hear what Anne Shepard whispered in Madison's ear. 
even though I'm like 95% sure I have it figured out. But I was saying that uh, this game is very, very realistic in the way that it portrays its characters like psychological reactions to various scenarios. It's very, you know, it really indicates an adult understanding of um, the organization of society and uh, human psychology. It's very mature in that regard. It's funny because the most immature part of this whole game are the fights. They're just so unrealistically drawn out and there's so much back and forth. Oh my god, you have the upper hand. Oh my god, they have the upper hand. And realistically, like, if you got into a fight to the death with someone, like, whichever one of you was a better fighter would win within the first five seconds. It wouldn't be like... Alright, so now we have Ethan again. You can face this way, you can face this way. They have some funky red tinted lights illuminating this hallway. I'm walking at full speed and he's just barely like lurching forward. He's completely lost all of his will, all of his drive. He knows he failed two trials, so even if he succeeds at this one, he's probably not going to be able to save his son. He's grimacing. Wow. I would love to have a mansion with a room like this. This could be a nice spooky white room for thinking about deep thoughts. If I had a room that was lit like this brightly, I could compose all sorts of great philosophy texts. I might be able to cure cancer. After failing the second trial, I pretty much decided that I wasn't going to do anything else stupid to please this killer, who happens to be named Shelby, so... I'm not gonna drink it. I'm gonna leave. I only killed the drug dealer because, uh, he was going to kill me, and once a fight starts, I like to finish it decisively. I don't like to just disarm my attacker and then... I'll find you some. You know, spare his life. I'll figure out a way, and I'll come and get you some. Let him kill someone else some other day. But since I didn't have all of the letters, I really didn't want to cut off a piece of my finger in order to get some more when it might not be enough. And I definitely don't want to die. I really hope that um, someone else can crack the case. Right now we have two people who could crack the case. Uh, we have Norman, and we have Madison. And uh, my money is on Madison because she seems a little more personally concerned with, like, the impact of the victim. Norman just seems like uh, he needs to take some time in the country and figure things out. Hopefully Ethan is good enough at playing hangman that he knows that uh, one of the words in the address is Roosevelt. Something five Roosevelt. to go to the Roosevelt room of the White House. Maybe that's where Sean is being held. Maybe the origami killer is in fact Barack Obama. It would be like a really good twist. I would totally buy the sequel if that turned out to be the case. Alright, what's Jaden going to do now? Ethan has failed the five trials. 
Well, he su succeeded in a couple of them. One by accident and one by intention. We've only got a few more hours left to save Sean Marks. There has to be a goddamn clue somewhere. It's probably staring me in the face. This kid's gonna die, and I'm going around in circles! It's not staring you in the face. The clue attacked you a couple hours ago in that club. Do you remember? The shadow monster? That's the clue. All packed up and ready to go? What are you talking about? The investigation's over. We know who did it. No longer you need your services anymore. <laughs> I know who did it too, but uh, I'm going to stop just for a second and I'm going to guess who um, Blake is going to say did it. Well, okay, of course, Blake is going to say that uh, Ethan Mars did it. Because uh, he's been chasing Ethan Mars for half the game. For, some, for a moment there, when I listened to that dialogue, I thought that Blake was going to come up with some much more far-fetched theory than that, just because of like the tone of the line. But uh, I guess there's no need for any detective work here, so... Sherlock Holmes, go back to the uh, closet. Go back to the opium den. I'll call you again when I need you. Just let me finish this video game, Sherlock, okay? I shall pay you handsomely for your services. You have helped me so far, so well so far in um, solving this deep, dark mystery.